Hey guys, the review will get started in a second. I'm filming this after I've already uh, done the review. I completely forgot to kind of talk about this because, like, as uh, people who like mentioned that, like, where's where's Hiccup's children? Why isn't this about his children? Why doesn't this have Hiccup in it and Toothless and everything? And it's really simple because that storyline is done. Hiccup story is done. Burke's story is done. It's like, okay, well, why not do it about his kids? Because that's done. <laughs> and the storyline wouldn't work because it was all about all the dragons, you know, leave to go to the hidden world because of humanity, because of humans using dragons. So it's not like they can't do something with his kids when they're older or something. But it just wouldn't work. Here, in a modern day setting, there's a reason, you know. There, there, there is a story here, there is a story to be told here about corruption and like the people of today and how they would treat dragons. There is, a, there is something here. There's a reason why this story is happening. Compared to if it was just his children, it would just be the same exact show, the exact same thing we already got. So there is a reason for it. So I just wanted to say that because I, I did forget to put it into a review. So there it is. Um, and also while I'm at it, I now have a coffee account, which means which is a little donation thingy. You can donate up to how much. Well, however much you want. It starts off as two dollars. A whole two dollars you can donate to me. That would be lovely. It, there's no fees, no sign up or anything like that. I fake. <laughs> so if you guys want to support me, support my channel and everything, please go over and donate to my coffee account. Uh, links in the description and everything. Anyway, on with this review. Hey guys, Blazy here, and welcome to the first review of 2022. Been a while since I did a proper review, so I'll just talk about everything generally and at least go through the first two episodes of this show. So there will be spoilers, but there's really nothing special to be spoiled at all. Everything I will talk about is in the trailer, which I will say is kind of a problem, I just realised. Nothing happens that you don't expect to happen. The kids meet the dragon, there's a boss dragon, that's kinda it. That's the show, it's definitely a starting point for something and that's not a bad thing as this show is only 6 episodes so it's not overstaying it's welcome. It introduces the characters and if it does well, there'll be more. So it starts off with them talking about dragons but in the end they're only stories right? A comet comes down to earth splitting open the ground into a large fissure. The opening scene here is the piano rhythm for the first movie play, for like the main theme, and I had to admit, it got me. It made me feel excited that I was once again watching something How to Train Your Dragon, a series that I love, and this scene looks quite beautiful, and that is something I'll say a few times. Though the animation itself is a mixed bag, it's not the worst. A lot of reviews I've seen, they outright hate the animation, but it's really not that different from the other two TV shows that they have made. And even then, it's not that bad to me. Yes, the characters, especially the background characters, do make me feel like I'm watching a preschool show, I will admit that, but it's not that bad, like some uh, reviewers say. This show focuses on the main character, Tom, who is an adventurous lad like when he was younger he went into a polar bear bin because it looked lonely. So he's a bit of an idiot, uh, but with good attention. Him and his mom are heading to Project Icarus. You know, the guy that flew up into the sun, burnt off his wings and died. Yeah, let's name something after him. Where we're going deep into a fissure, downward. Not into up into the sun, but downward into the earth. Yeah, Icarus doesn't make sense here. So his mom is a scientist and figured out what the comet was going to do and basically is a lead scientist on this project to study the fissure. Other characters here include the boss, whose design is my least favourite. She's also June's mum, the other major character that I was worried would just be Astrid. And yeah, there are moments where she sounds like Astrid, but for the most part is very much her own, her own character. She likes tarot cards and is all spiritual. So, like, yeah, she is very different in that kind of sense. We got the uptight security guard, whose son, D'Angelo, is another major character. 
He is a military son, so he understands tactics, but also helps out with veterinarian stuff, having learned some things from his family. But is also just like a sweet dude in general. The other major character is Alex, who is extremely shy and quiet, not talking at all in the first episode. She prefers her gadgets and just like very computer tech kind of nerd. We're still waiting on one more team. Uh, Pops? Move! Where'd you come from? Though she does slowly open up as the show goes on. I have to say, there's a great deal of diversity. Like, Alex is short for Alexandra Gonzalez, aka she is a Hispanic. DeAndre's mom is in a wheelchair, but also with Alex, she doesn't just have one mom, she has two moms. Yeah, a lesbian couple. Good job, DreamWorks. Good job. Like, yeah, it's very diverse. I really gotta give him that. Within the first episode, as the security guard is taking them around the place, Tom sneaks off and takes a closer look at the treads, seeing something down there before an earthquake happens, almost killing someone but that was there too, but he saves them, showing that he is brave and willing to risk his life to help someone. Back at home, his mom scolds him for wanting off, but we also get this. Him pulling out a Viking helmet and saying that they come from Vikings. So I guess that's some kind of like connection then, I guess. So blah blah, he takes the drone down into a fissure which then gets sapped. And so he goes down himself to retrieve it. And he finds like a big pile of rocks with something inside. Trapped from the earthquake. He freaks out a bit and starts to climb back up. But hearing its cries, he can't help but go down and check up on, on what's in there. He sees like the creature has like a tail and that's trapped under a rock and so he frees it. And then a burst of lightning breaks the rocks and the dragon is free. Getting our first look at him and end of episode 1. So far, not too bad. I'm intrigued. And start of episode 2, I love the face he makes here. Just such a great face. <laughs> it shows him getting very irritated by the light, not really understanding what it is. And even acts straight up like a cat trying to attack it. And also that he could use lightning to switch it off before flying away. Tom climbs back up only to start falling to his death, but is rescued by the dragon. And so now comes the cute stuff. The dragon saves him and they fly into a cave where he starts sniffing out food. He ends up stealing Tom's backpack and rummaging for it. Okay, I'm just gonna see myself out. <laughs> Taking out a water bottle and thinking he then like needs water, he like shares it with him, nothing happens. He ends up stealing a whole thing of Chris, bag and all. That doesn't work out. At one point he pulls out his phone but figures no problem, like people shouldn't see him just yet, kind of thing. So he, he is aware of like, this is like an amazing thing, I shouldn't really show people though. He ends up taking Tom back home, using his lightning powers like an EMP, shutting down the systems so he could fly in and put Tom down without being spotted. Which like now his like hair is like a mess because of electricity. A running gag I do find funny because I am like just such a child. Later Tom ends up like drawing the dragon when he's with the others, June questioning him about things and he starts telling her what he saw and shows like the drawing, which I, I do like looks like a kid's drawing. <laughs> Though somehow he doesn't put together that it's a dragon at first, like, oh, maybe it's a bat. Yeah, definitely a bat. Or maybe a flying dinosaur. It's June that considers it could be a dragon. But no, dragons don't exist, so it can't possibly be that white. Yet you think it could be a bat. June explains, well, there's dragon stories all over the world, so they had to have, like, like come from somewhere white. And, she, and so she believes they are real, and finally, the quiet one speaks. White out saying exactly what humanity would do if dragons were real and live today. Mm -mm. If dragons were real, humanity would exterminate them. Dragons would be hunted to the ends of the earth, chased down, and turned into boots, belts, and burgers. Big business would exploit them, reducing them to a tiny column of profit margins on an endless spreadsheet of doom. I honestly love that. They recognize that, like... Because that's the problem with like this modern day setting, is the idea of like, well no, humans aren't ready for dragons yet, that's kind of what the story is about, humans aren't ready for dragons. And all of a sudden, here we go, here's dragons in this modern day setting, and it's like, no, we're not ready yet. And so yeah, this character acknowledges, no, humans would use them. So, 
I appreciate they know that no, it's not time yet. And I'll get I'll get a bit more into that later towards the towards the end of the review, so stick around, ha huh? please. <laughs> I also recognize the subtlety of his clothing here. For one, the Viking like symbol. Also the middle shirt is like a rocket shooting up into the sky. Okay, like it's flying around in the sky. And he has a pass fan as a lightning bolt. Kinda of funny that it ends up like being him, you know, it's just oh, lightning, he gets a lightning dragon, and he's flying around, and yeah. <laughs> so the kid ends up like going out to get food for the dragon, pulling out a whole nicely wended making me hungry for one burger out of the fridge. Like, ew, but okay. His mum comes in and have a conversation of like, oh, what if we found a new species? How cool would that be? You and me, mum, could study them. But she says, oh yes, and a company that's financing this would be so happy. So yeah, throwing in business people and just, oh, yep, it'll be all for profits. She leaves, he dumps a burger into his backpack. Ew. <laughs> he follows this map of caves given to him by Alex after, like, she was, like, being all weird in, like, one scene with her. <laughs> and he goes down to where he was with the dragon before, a season there and offers him pizza, hamburger, and spaghetti. He hates them. <laughs> and yes, I know, I, I, I said it weird. <laughs> Little montage of other food, and I love what they do here of him just slapping it away. <laughs> but he has one last thing. Fish nuggets. I don't know what fish nuggets are, but in the end he likes nuggets, because he doesn't like some nugs. <laughs> Dragons like fish! So yay, finally the dragon likes something, and we get a little recreation of a scene of Toothless sharing his food with Hiccup. Okay, at least it's not fish that was eaten and then threw up, but it's, it's still very funny and very cute, because they go through the whole, whole thing together. get the hand scene. A scene that every How to Train Your Dragon thing needs. After eating, the dragon rests by him, and I love the music here. Like, like the music isn't too bad in the show. They never use, like, the theme songs and such from, like, the movies, I guess because of licensing and such, which is weird because it's the same thing. But, uh, I, I don't know. So that kind of sucks, you know. We'll have, like, little rhythms here and there that sound like it. And it is something I wish they did more of, but this little music theme isn't too bad because uh, they they use it white. They 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 used it white here with it slowly building up as he reaches his hand over the touch him in like the classic scene that's like always this beautiful kind of moment because it's a moment a bond is formed. <laughs> The dragon at first like, ill dude, why would you do that? And that's kind of funny. But then looks at him and Tom reaches out and touches his head, which then gets a little zap of lightning, so his hair just goes poof. <laughs> but then they're all snugly and cuddling up together and it's a very adorable. And then he like even like pats down his hair. But that's really cute. I really love this scene. <laughs> And then he says, hey, what do you want to do now? And so in the next scene, they're flying together. And though he's just holding them as they fly. That's kind of great. Just in the sense that, like, a human hasn't written a dragon in over a thousand years. 
she has no idea what happens, like, in that kind of sense. So he just flies him, uh, you know, with his hands and all that. That's, that's kind of great. I like it. <laughs> And I do love the area of it. It looks really cool. I love, like, uh, the, the lighting and everything. The flying scenes with this area looks really good to me. I love the colouring of the lava. It just looks magical, in other words. And then another earthquake happens. So there's rocks falling down and end up dropping the kid. Things slow down, reminiscent of, like, the first movie. And then flies out of this, like, fog with him now on his back. And then he flies off into a cave. There's some light coming through a wall, and so they break through it, dun dun dun. There's the hidden world. Or at least part of it deep down into this fissure is an area full of dragons in this world, hidden world. <laughs> Which does look beautiful. Again, like, I don't think the CGI is that bad. It can look rather nice, some good use of colour and lighting. This is where it, the, the CGI shines the best. So, alright, that's the setup, that's the first two episodes, and it has me hooked. I love the dragon who is later named Thunder, because lightning would be too on the nose. <laughs> I was kind of expecting him to call him Thor, to be honest, but Thunder works. I absolutely do love the dragon in it, though yes, he is very toothless-like, but I love some of his facial expressions, and then I realised what the weird difference is, because like in some shots his face looks kind of weird, but that's because he has a muzzle. Toothless do doesn't have one, but Thunder does. And I feel like they're able to do more of his facial expressions because of it. This kind of does make sense because, like, the, uh, the, you know, it's been, like, a thousand years, so, you know, the evolution, blah, 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 uh, and him crossbreeding with the Light Fury, who, ha who had a nose and everything. So, different facial structure and all that. So, it does kind of make sense to change up the design a little bit. I don't know, he just looks cute, and I'm a sucker for cute. Either way, I like him, and I'm enjoying this show, so I won't like go for each episode now as again a problem with this show is you know exactly what will happen episode three is about june getting her dragon Wei and Wu, the twin headed dragon who i do like and how they i love how they become friends episode four is d'angelo getting his dragon blauhorn or blowhorn i think something like that <laughs> For his like veterinary and military skills. Episode 5 is then about Alex getting her dragon, and it is kind of adorable. The, the dragon like sees the kids with like their dragons, and so he wants a friend too, and finds Alex seeing her alone and befriends her in a very cute episode because like Alex is very alone, very like, like she likes her computers and all that kind of stuff. She doesn't like the outside world at all, uh, which I will explain in a second. Um, she doesn't like any of that stuff, and this dragon is a stealth dragon who can hide itself and everything. So, it's very fitting for her, basically. Then episode 6 is fighting off against the big bad dragon that's basically been causing all the earthquakes that happen in, like, each episode, and start to get worse. The dragon is mostly blind, it goes by hearing, and is a cave driller. It digs his, his way through caves very creatively, I will say. I do actually kind of like his design, being just like very traditional dragon-like. Uh, I, I kind of dug it. And then that's kind of all that happens in this show. So what is the Nine Worms? Who knows? It's more so a play on like Norse mythology. But yeah. The other problem I have with this show is each character has the same reaction when they see a dragon. They freak out. So we'll go through episode 3, 4, and 5 with each character freaking out about seeing a dragon. It's just a little bit like, okay, we get it, move on. But it does help flesh out the characters, like with Alex, who find out, like, like why she is so shy when, like, this, like, uh, dragon is kind of stalking her, trying to be friends with her and all that, she kind of just breaks down. And has like a little conversation with Tom. And basically when she was a kid, she was walking home and was followed by a big dog. And everyone was like, no, cute, you should pet it. And so she does. And it bites her. <laughs> so now she doesn't consider the outside world safe and doesn't trust people since they're all like, it's safe to pet. But it wasn't. <laughs> It's not the best excuse, but it's an excuse all the same. But at least you do get to see each character have, like, their moment, compared to some of the worst moments in the movies with the supporting characters and their dragons. I don't mind the new characters too much either. I went into it not liking them based on, like, the, just on their designs, really. But in the end, no, they're fine, and their own characters. I like Tom, and I do like Alex. She has, like, a moment where she is panicking about, like being seen with a dragon, but then the dragon comes over and comforts her and stops her from panicking, and it's a really adorable, kind of sad, cute moment. 
Like, I do feel like they just kind of, like, smushed in a couple characters together from the original two. But that's okay, because they're still their own. There's a couple of good jokes here and there. Like, in the first episode, Tom actually shaved a sheep. Which, <laughs> I love the sheep are still here. You can't have... You, you can't have How to Train Dragon without these sheep. He actually, yeah, he accidentally shaved it with his drone, and in, like, every episode, it appears and tries to attack him. That's kind of funny to me. There's lines that are, like, similar to the movie, like this one. Ow! That's for scaring me to death. But what about everything else? Drag me back. Go ahead. Here we go. Ow! Why would you do that? That's for the lies. That's... Ugh! everything else. So there are plenty of references and callbacks in a way, and when he is in the hidden world, which I will say I don't think it's meant to be the actual hidden world that we saw in the movie, just another section of it, just clarifying that. <laughs> but yeah, there's also like a terrible terror which pops up, which I miss those little guys, so that's a cute little thing. But as far as connection goes, that's where it ends, for now. There's one at the very end of the show where the kids will put up handprints on the wall like, yeah, this is our home, our base, and all that, and then Thunder adds his own mark, which Tom recognises, so then we see him holding the Viking helmet, and they got the same symbol on the back of it. It was cleverly hidden the first time they showed it off. <laughs> so, there's that. I hope they do more with that in the future, and this isn't all we get. They need to do something more. Like, why does this dragon know this symbol? So, I did skip over the last few episodes, but again, not much really happens in terms of plot, besides them getting the dragon. So, like, each episode does matter, don't... Like, they aren't, like, rust or anything like that. Each episode does matter. Each episode was still fun. I don't mind the characters, as I said, and I quite like the personality of the dragons and, and their designs. I quite like the two-headed dragon, Wei and Wu. They have a very Chinese-inspired design to them. And he can breathe ice and fire or something? I'm kind of confused, exactly. As in one scene, he freezes something, and then the other one then the other one uses its breath to destroy it. It's, I'm kind of confused. It's kind of like he one does frost, the other one does smog, or something like that. I'm, I'm a little confused by that. It's not quite fire or something, but... It's very much heat. I think he can produce heat. Because then they can also create smog to hide themselves. The big dragon Plowhorn buffs out goop balls, basically. But it also eats gems, which then gets, like, the name, they all get the name Gem Breaker, basically. And the other one, called Feathers, can go invisible. And I do like the look of it as it runs around Alex's home, all invisible, and uses, like, sonic waves, and it can mimic sounds, including Alex's voice at one point, which was kind of creepy, but kind of cool, I guess. You're trying to help me calm down. Calm down! <laughs> I'm curious to see how they use that in the future, which is also how they defeat the Fault Whipper Dragon at the end, which is what they call it, a Fault Whipper. So they're still coming up with some cool little names here and there. Because it's basically blind and like, so the sound waves hurt it, so Alex ends up pretty much saving the day. <laughs> There's also a scene where thunder suddenly goes up into the sky during a thunderstorm, and at the end of the episode, when everyone has their dragons, they're all like, yeah, we're like one big family. And Tom realises that's what thunder was searching for, why he went into a thunderstorm looking for dragons like him. So, I also wonder about this, if that will lead to anything, if we'll end up seeing, like, more, uh, night lights, or even, maybe, even, like, a night fury, or a light fury, or something like that. I'm very curious about what they do there. In the last episode, there's also a new character that is, like, a rival to Tom's mom, and seems like she'll be a future villain, so, it feels like they're setting things up there, which I do feel like there needed to be more, maybe, like, one more episode to set up something big. But we just get little setups instead, and that's fine, but maybe something bigger to get us excited would have been good. But for what it is, I enjoyed it, and, and am excited to see what's next. I will absolutely say, this in no way ruins How to Trade the Dragon, like some reviewers say. I don't get that, like, oh, they ruined it, and all that, it's like, no. <laughs> For one thing, you don't have to watch this at all. You just watch, you know, the other movies and all that. They did ruin it there, you know. They would have ruined it if they ruined Hiccup's story or something like that, but they didn't. You know, that's still all perfect and everything, so just go enjoy that. <laughs> this is, this show is quite harmless. It does explain how they find the dragons and why now, in a way, 
that does like feel fitting in a modern day setting while also still explaining why they still need to hide them. The kids understand that and keep it a secret from their parents, which the parent characters, I don't mind too much. There isn't really a character I hate besides her, but that's just because of her design. <laughs> I am hoping for interesting villains and interesting worlds to visit. I am hoping for so much more in the next season, but for now, what we got, I did enjoy. As I said, I do like the main characters Tom and Thunder. Thunder can be adorable, I'd also like the look of his lightning attacks and all that. They did like really cool, a really cool little design for that. It just looks cool <laughs> when he does things with it, really making more sense to his Night Fury's name, for the sake of like unholy offspring of lightning and death. <laughs> I for one want merch of him. Come on, give me a plus of him and I will be happy. <laughs> anyway, I will give it a solid 8 out of 10 foxes. If you are a fan, you will like this show because it hits all the white beats and you will understand why the series is okay to happen like this. It's to show that the world still isn't ready for dragons. That's the story. That's what it's about. The world isn't ready because of the greedy corporations. That's why the dragons left because humans wanted to use them for their own needs. So as long as the series doesn't end with dragons now living in our world happily, but with an ending as sad as the original of them going back to the hidden world until humans are ready, then I will be okay with this show. That ending is definitely gonna be like they really need to do that kind of ending. If if they go with a happy ending of everyone getting dragons and Dragons are now, like, allowed in human society. It just, it wouldn't work. That would ruin it. That would ruin the message. But yeah, I enjoyed it. What do you guys think? If you have seen it, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a like. And subscribe to my channel because I'll love you if you do. Hit that bell icon. And this fox says, be who you want to be. Alright guys, bye for now.